man, you come straight out of the car. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Straight Out of a Comic Book. You know what it is, man. Some of your favorite black entertainers and some of you just melanated entertainers coming together to talk about everything comic book related from movies, television, actual comics, everything that you could think of that's blurred, man. I'm Will Farrow. Of course, today we got CT, Dion Lack, and Young Deuces in the building. And y'all know I've been waiting on this, man. You've been waiting. Um, You've been waiting. See? CT been whipping me into viewership shape. I don't like it, but I get it. Cause now I'm not even I'm not even looking at like Wakanda Forever clips. I'm like, nope. Yeah, no, me either. Me either. November 11th. No, sir. Yeah. I won't. I won't do it. Mm-mm. And now coming anyway. Like, they coming with them. They coming with them. But I'm I'm, I'm keeping steadfast. But that's not what we're talking about today. Um, as y'all know, She Hulk. It's finally done. First season is out. First season is done in the books, man. Nine episodes of this show. Um, not sure if it's a season two, so I don't want to just call that out. But we got a lot to discuss today about this, man. We're talking about the first season of She-Hulk. So for y'all that just don't know, just quick little little catch up, man. She-Hulk is about a woman named Jennifer Walter. She is the cousin of Bruce Banner, a.k.a. the Hulk, Smug Hulk. Professor Hulk, you know, whichever one he going to buy right now. And due to an accident, her blood infuses with his blood and she becomes infected and becomes She-Hulk. And so in trying to find the balance of being able to remain an attorney and having to go through this transition of being a She-Hulk, we get to see the wild roller coaster ride that is her new life as She-Hulk. And so uh, we got crazy cameos in this. We got a pretty great story. So I just want to jump and dive in it to it. First, start with uh, CT. Uh, how are you feeling about season one of She-Hulk? Here's the thing. Come on. Did not want to like this show at all. I'm talking about, I was like, this is about to be some bullshit. You understand? This is about to be just, this is about to just be horrible. So be a waste <laughs> of time. I thought it was going to be, um, <laughs> Because what what aired before this? Oh, um, Miss Marvel, and then before Miss Marvel, Moon Knight. Moon Knight. And it took me a while to even get into Moon Knight. Well, I tried to start immediately, and then it fell off. And then three months later, after it already went off, I started back from episode three, and I fell in love with the series because it picked up. Miss Marvel, I got to like episode three, and I was like, all right, I'm still not the audience for it, but it's cool. She Hulk, I was like, all right, let's see what this is about to be. I got three minutes <laughs> in, and I said, "Oh shit, I love yeah. this show." Yeah, and it was fire. This season, yeah. as we'll get into this season, man. First of all, it's very smart to look at the show as what it is, which is a legal comedy. If you look at this as a legal comedy, Ally McBeal with superpowers you're going to rejoice now if you mm -hmm. look at this trying to see uh, a captain america winter soldier type movie you're not yeah. gonna see that this movie was i mean this this show was phenomenal i love the young lady that plays jennifer walters she's first of all let's also talk brass tacks she's not unattractive so i don't even know how they tried to paint her <laughs> like she wasn't a beautiful white woman you understand me what but she's adorable, Ooh. not beautiful. She's adorable. I love her smile. Her teeth yeah. are great. Her yeah. face. You on mute, Will? Yeah, you will. You mute. Uh, when what? we put her ass, when we talked about this, it was like there's a row of that classic beauty that you see in white woman, like Meryl Streep and Hathaway, and then you have those that I always call it the the funny girl next door, like um, yeah. the like uh, what's her face from Superman? Yeah, yeah, or even like her, like her. Uh, oh man, I don't know why I'm drawing a play. Emma Stone and all Ooh, of that cast. Yeah, yeah, like all of them in that. That's, that's, a, that's a really you, good one. Yeah, you would put her within that. She could be in that caliber of top of like the pretty women in that group. Uh, yeah. The Anna Kendricks and stuff like that. Like those. Uh, what do you know? Everybody else. No, I'm trying to think of who's the other one from uh, Community. What was her name from Community? They played in Glow. Uh, Allison. Oh, Brie. Allison yeah. Brie. Yeah. Pretty, you know, cute, pretty, you know, I, you know, we we not putting up in the top of epsilon and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but you know, for the category that they're in, that's what I would put. Uh, she Hulk, uh, Jennifer Walters character. Man, Jennifer Walters, oh, and also we saw this dynamic of her battling 
what she feels, which is she feels incomplete as Jennifer Walters because she ain't getting no love now that She-Hulk's been around and She-Hulk getting this thing where she doesn't feel substance. Everybody just wants to smash and look at her as this oddity and then her trying to even figure out, well, who do I want to be? I def I'm not a superhero like my cousin. And then some things happen to where she's like, all right, well, damn, I guess I am a hero. And when she goes on that ride, we were, I'm not going to jump ahead of y'all, but when she goes yeah, on that yeah. ride and we see who we see, I said, this is how you sprinkle a goddamn hero into the show. Because when we look back at the Netflix Marvel shows, I think the introduction of the Punisher was the greatest introduction before somebody got their own series I've ever seen. Had they done that, like they did that with Luke Cage and Jessica, Jessica Jones, but they did it perfectly with Punisher, and they did that perfectly with this character on She-Hulk. Yeah, yes, indeed, I agree. Uh, Dion, what about you, man? First thoughts on the uh, first season? <laughs> um, first thoughts was, oh, because I so I, I wasn't a comic book She-Hulk person, so I was like, oh, they're going the the Deadpool route. That's that's pretty dope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cause I didn't know if she she did it first. Yeah. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes, she did. You guys froze up with me a little bit. Uh, I didn't know. I, I saw. So so when I saw, I was, the, oh, it was pretty was cool. Yeah, I was like, hey, I was like why did you stop? Yeah. I was like, was that right? Yeah, was like, oh yeah, I was like. <laughs> 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 like Let's say D. I had the quickest uh, review. <laughs> Man. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so um yeah, so the, oh this is about to be funny. And I and I was a fan of Alan McBeal, so I was like, okay, they going that route. That's pretty funny. I love it. I love what's happening. When I when I just erased the fact that this is a comedy and enjoyed the the slices of life and not make it into like a this is like a long movie. I was like every episode was like a beginning, middle, and end. Mm -hmm. Um with a sprinkle of a, a longer A story. Um, and I, I just, I just, I just, I just loved the show. But then I started to kind of hate, like, why nobody liked this show? Me too. I can't, we go, we go, we go. People that. like, okay, we don't get into that. So, Jazz hates so, it. so, so, yes, he does. So, my, I, my I just only, interviewed. my only uh, caveat, if you will, is I don't Hold know on. how we they're going fucking to. Fucking told you about this phone. We told you about this phone. You put your phone on silent right now, Dion. Put it on. Do it is. It's not. Oh, how you gonna tell it's us, it's nigga? We just heard we about Frazier. Mm -hmm. Turn the phone on silent and give me my order of fries <laughs> in the second window right now. <laughs> Text me in with Trixie. I'm trying to get to the booty talk on the channel. Man, my my only issue is I don't know how they're going to use her with the rest of the. MCU. That's that's mm -hmm. what scares me, because I was like, are you gonna stop doing the third third wall? I mean, the fourth wall. Um, or, you know, say, is it? I mean, I, I don't. I know she's they're gonna keep her having comedy, but I was like, she's the only one who broke the fourth wall. So I was like, I don't know how they're going to merge her with other people. Well, actually, she's technically not. Wanda actually was. If you're watching Doctor Strange and the Method of Madness, they credit her to when she's switching and she looks into the camera. That's her acknowledging us as oh. us as a viewer. And they said that was her basically breaking the fourth wall. So I think they are sprinkling mm -hmm. it in for us to understand that type of dynamic there. There are characters that are self-aware of this and what's going on in our world and what's in theirs because of the fact yeah, that... that they're acknowledging that we're also a universe within this universe, right? Because do we do we also count Agatha and uh, her breaking the wall, or just that? Oh, mm -hmm. oh, oh yeah, yeah, because of modern family, the modern family when she was talking to us on one division. Yeah, you're right. That was another time, but that was before. more like an intro, wasn't it? Because it was, like no, a, she was, it was talking, Agatha she... all along, and she's no, like, no, 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 and that no, killed no. Scrappy too. No, the modern family up when uh, Wanda's sitting there talking, doing a confessional. Mm -hmm. She's oh. talking to us when she's doing her confessional, and then you see Agatha in the back, and then she starts right, to drag. Right. Yeah, but I think Agatha it is pretty as a, she's a, as the actress. We're talking about funny, beautiful uh, white women. She's beautiful. Yes. Catherine Hahn. 
Catherine Hahn. I don't, I don't know what fan. Catherine Hahn did in these last five years, but she she stepped it up because at first she 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 was okay. Then now when she came out of Zach, I was like, oh, you know what did that Marvel me? money? It was that reveal that she was uh behind it all along when they showed that, like y'all just referenced, and she was like, We're rolling. It was like, oh, she's so cute. <laughs> it was me in the 80s when she had on them aerobics clothes. I was oh, like, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I say, okay, I can th- hold on. I can do some, some stretches with you. Hold on. <laughs> you know, you know who my uh old white woman I love? Who is uh Diane Keaton. Ooh, oh, you love me. I, hey, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. Let me live. I said old. I specifically said old. Yeah, but that's just. Yeah. <laughs> come on, man. He, he didn't say what he was going to do. Yeah. He might want to just read to it. I want to I wanna smell her. I'm sure her hair smells like okay. almonds. Well, and, and all right, now that got way weird. That you know what? <laughs> I apologize, CT, because you, you were preparing this story. I'm telling you, you bro. <laughs> This is like Spider Man No Way Home. I just Spider Man this. You, you were Doctor Strange telling me this is gonna definitely get weird. And I'm like, oh. we gotta keep going. Man, <laughs> how it now? If we're, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Deuces, because Dion is on some wild shit. Give us your thoughts. <laughs> so, just like CT, I went into this ex- not expecting to like this at all. And in that first episode, it did grab me. And throughout the whole series, the one thing that I just kept on saying is like, I want this to continue because. To me, I feel like this show, the importance of this show would be all those characters that we would love to see come to life Mm -hmm. that don't really necessarily deserve or need a full movie, like to have them go through some type of courtroom drama based off of their superhero ability within this show. To me, I think that this is the perfect engine for that, but this is the perfect engine for everything that happens in the main Marvel timelines whatever small level backlash or legal issue that they got to deal with to come down to this show i feel like this show that's the importance throughout the whole mcu and that we should be able to to like to to keep this going based off of that and then also like i said the to me i love the episode to episode dramas you know where it's like you have that underlying thing but i love that every episode we're going to get a some a issue and we're going to get a resolve at it and yeah. we're going to get an issue and a resolve like i love how that pacing was for this show it was something that was different from the other shows and i just love the take on it and, I, and to me i thought the comedy was done well within the show so it was like i there was I, it was hitting firing off on all cylinders for me yeah, I'm about to uh, say the same thing for me, man. I absolutely love this show. Uh, to say, you know, just pieces from everything that y'all said. I love lawyer shows like Ally McBeal, Sparks, Sparks, and Sparks. So it was just like, oh yeah, it's oh, Sparks, Sparks, hey, Sparks. hey, yeah. so, hey to is. see this stuff, it was so cool. Like three, three of the things that I took away from this was one, I love how unapologetic Jen Walters was as herself. Like even though you saw her go through her trials and tribulations, she was never. You never saw her doubt who she was Mm -hmm. as a person. Mm -hmm. And that always stood very clear through her and through She-Hulk. Another thing that I really took away from this was because of the fact of, like y'all said, this is someone that isn't necessarily a big factor, Mm -hmm. but now has shown that she can be within that realm of like, where is Deadpool going to get put? Which actually kind of eases me too, as uh, for him to be introduced into the MCU Mm -hmm. because of him being such a fourth wall breaker. We see that, okay, I can see this now underlaying of heroes that do acknowledge that. And then another great thing they did do about this season was they showed us something that a lot of these um, series nor have these movies shown us in these phases, which is the regular people having to deal with everything that's going on. So it's like I've never seen so many like newscast episodes that show you like all of these humans adapting not only to the Mm -hmm. superhero element, the outer space element of actually having aliens around, the magical Mm -hmm. element, the demonic element, and Mm -hmm. seeing these people, like even like going to, um, I believe what it was, like episode two with the elf and just how it was, how it was just so natural that a judge is talking about an elf basically doing a counterfeit scheme on a a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And how normal it seemed, it wasn't no big to do. So it was like, I like seeing them setting us up as to where everybody in the world is viewing these folks because you know like the last time we talked about there's still a big ass head and a big ass <laughs> sitting in the fucking yeah. arctic 
not causing no polar caps to melt. But you know, yeah. hey, yeah. maybe they're gonna address that too. Yeah. So, oh, um, yeah. I mean, that's the one thing that I noticed this show really amplified is that. Like how, like you said, how the world is reacting to it. Because even when they were searching like YouTube and the news sites, just to see like the thumbnail of somebody talking about, you know, a specific small moment or a big moment, they're like, yeah, it makes sense. Like in this world where influencers live, there will be somebody that's going to have a YouTube channel like, oh my God, did y'all see blah, 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 boom, boom, boom. So it's like, I love that too. Like it's, it's become that, like showing that that is a big, uh, a dope call out. Yeah. I also, I also like how it was a great example for them to blend in modern times with the MCU. Like, I, mm -hmm. I say this now, Titania walked so a lot of these future people are going to be able to run. Because mm -hmm. her being a villain and making that into a brand and then actually, like, suing Jen for her fucking trademark <laughs> and stuff. But she got, like, the she's a social media star who's still a bad guy. And it's like, Mm -hmm. Wow, you're like you're like you like how we see in normal comics, like you're Lex Luthor, you're Kingpin, like you out here, people know what you do, but you still not being stopped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So is that that's that that element. So I just want to uh, but we're gonna go ahead and jump into the season and we're gonna start off again like with episode one and two. So episode one, you know, we kind of we got the I like how we just jump straight into it. It's just like yo. Here's what happened. We ain't finna make this a whole episode. Here's what happened. Yeah, I became a Hulk. There you go. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Loved the cameo with Bruce. Loved to see, like, like saw what Bruce was doing. Um, arm is healed and everything. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Love seeing that. yeah. Mm -hmm. I love seeing the balance too between them because, like, you see what every we all know what Bruce went through to get to where he's at now. To then just see his cousin come through it was like, all right, now nah, I'm not really raging like you, so I got this down pat. Like it was just, <laughs> and, and and you could tell like in Bruce's mind, he probably like, wait a minute, hold up, like you know what I'm saying? Like I went to hell and how I, I was over here fighting for my life for years, <laughs> <laughs> trying to direct. I was gone for two years. I was gone for two years. You ever you, you don't know what that's like to go to sleep, wake up for two years. I'm over here and fighting, fighting to keep this wait. anger. <laughs> You but That's I also funny. liked I like seeing even for the slight second of how the hopes went at it and stuff like that. Like even like when they started fighting, you can see it's like we saw Jen and uh and Bruce and how their conflict went, but then we saw it come together with their anger kind of taking over slightly and the two hopes going at it. And still mm -hmm. Hulk getting his butt kicked by She Hulk mm -hmm. and everything. So mm -hmm. I, I love that setup of how it showed their differences between one another and how their paths will have those similarities, but be different. You know what I love? It was a nice little writing um, they did. I think it was like episode three or something. When she was like, uh, hey, Bruce, I uh, just wanted to call and let you know if um, I'm going to be uh, representing uh, the abomination. Um, if, will, will that be all right? He looked at the camera and said, listen, Jen, I was a totally different person at that time. Yeah. <laughs> now y'all know we talked about that already. We didn't got we didn't look look. If y'all seen our previous episodes, y'all know my theory on that, and I still stand oh by my, my theory. On that I love that he said like, "Hey, I was Ed Norton at that time. I was a totally yeah. different person." <laughs> 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 yeah, he, threw the, he, threw the, he threw the literally in there. Yeah, literally. like literally. That's, that's that's what made this 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 uh this show so smart is because yeah. even with the even like you know I know I'm not gonna jump all the way ahead, but even at the end, you know where she's asking the things that we as fans are gonna ask. Like it's just there was so much smart. There was so many smart moments in this whole series that was just like, oh man, I love that because it's like yes, yeah, and it makes sense that a fourth wall breaker would be the yeah. one that does that so here's well, the thing i'll oh, yeah. oh, go ahead i think this man i love the show one bad thing that i'm thinking immediately is <sighs> although i don't like trailers i understand that you have to show certain people trailers but the thing about shows like this is they kind of hurt themselves by revealing certain things too early they're like hey guys next week daredevil makes an appearance and it's like what are we doing 
why oh, wouldn't yeah. you just let this be a surprise for the mm-hmm. audience? Yeah. Don't you don't have to yeah. advertise it. Then with the final episode, they showed up oh, an abomination and Hulk fight, and it's like, yes, I know this is gonna be a swerve, but at the same time, you don't need to show me them for me to watch. Mm-hmm. If I've been watching, I'm gonna watch. Mm-hmm. I don't need to see this fight between Hulk and Bob. And now I'm already looking like, wait, but the storytelling you've shown me a meal hadn't turned into abomination. You showed me the Hulk is on another planet. Right. So it's like, now you're show, you're tipping your hand almost. Also to the fact of like, when did the Hulk get shorter than abomination? Cause the last time what's oh, that about they yeah. were the same height when they fought. I yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. um, I was, I but, I, but I got what I the, my only theory is is just the fact of abomination just kept growing. Is that the same thing as abomination? Because <laughs> abomination, <laughs> abomination, <laughs> abomination. <laughs> Obama get mad. That was, that was, that was the, the president's slogan right there. This is abomination. <laughs> this is abomination. <laughs> uh, <laughs> When Hulk Obama's Lord. anger translator doesn't work, when his anger translator <laughs> doesn't work, then he goes further than that. <laughs> I'm not gonna let you hurt these people. And you're supposed to be in first. I'm angry. Obama Nation. I'm angry. I'm angry. You're not like me when I'm angry. You would not like it. <laughs> you let me fucking relax. <laughs> but yeah, I, I guess abomination might have been just in his like first stage and then grew and stuff because mm-hmm. you know like not having the ears in the original one and stuff like that so i was just talking it up today but like how you said too i think it does it hurt a little bit because like you said it's like okay well now i know it makes you wonder like and try to guess what the next thing is and it's just like yeah you know what i'm saying like give me the surprise of watching the finale and being like yo right and then yeah, so okay. let's talk about the finale for a second you showed me something that I thought was about to be one thing. You tell me that you want something different. This is my only episode that I was like, eh. and then at the end of the episode, you show her coming back from talking to Kevin, AKA Feige, uh, the machine. And then she comes back and all of this has been wrapped up. She never even had to get them out of the lodge. They were just right. waiting right there with the police. I'm like, this is a letdown, bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't like that we didn't get a end. I, I yeah. didn't like that they made that the yeah. end. And then we yeah. just like, I get us thirty minutes, but then also too, it's like y'all normally extend season finales too. So and it's that's like, what I thought they was going to do. Yeah. So it kind it kind of felt like too, like even in watching this, there's some things that they weren't confident in just betting on, and so they tried to think that this would work when it's just like. No, I'll give it to us because once you redigest it, you see so much. Like even just talking about what we just did about the small thing of Bruce acknowledging I was a totally different person. Yeah. That lays the undertone for all MCUs now because of fact, like even Harrison Ford now being cast as General Ross, like you now can play Big that. You know, you know we'll, we'll talk about that in another episode. But you, you now can show like when someone gets replaced, like even like Rhodes – being replaced with Don F. Don Cheetah <laughs> and stuff. It now gives that anchor of if people are going to get replaced, you can even play into it now rather than us trying to figure out, okay, well, what happened when this person is gone? What happened when this person is gone? Or knowing too, like for Chadwick's instance, that was just a special occasion. All of y'all decided that that's how you're going to honor his memory by not recasting him. But everybody else is still up for grabs. So I like and that. Well- that and what Feige said recently was at that time, it was too soon. And I respected and understood that. But now it's no longer too soon because now we deserve for that character to live on. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, you know, I definitely want children of all races, but especially young black women and young black men to be able to see themselves. So it's great that I know we're going to have a woman, Black Panther, but I want the character of T'Challa to continue to live on yeah. in a uh, live action form. Yeah. So I got the universe. Man. Yeah, he said in the beginning when he made the reference, I mean when he made the uh, statement right after Chadwick passed, he says, I will not recast the Black Panther in the 616 universe. Yeah. Universe, so yeah. that le- like why would you say something so specific other than saying, than saying I won't recast. Yeah. yeah. But you so, will see someone else in this suit. 
Yeah. yeah. Do you do you think that Marvel that they created a scapegoat with Kevin the robot? Because the way yes. that Jen just was able to to change everything, like you now you don't necessarily have to give a reason why something changed. If you have one of the fourth wall breakers talk to Kevin and say, you know, what I'm saying changes, do you think that that may be something they lean on? Well, they they also said too that in the actual episode that wasn't gonna happen again. They was like, yo, like that's not oh, gonna you happen sure did. again. You did, see yeah, that? they sure did. But one thing that did show me though was something that you just also too brought up is. I would like to see more representation because you know, like of course we're gonna, we, you know, we're gonna jump to the final episode where Jen breaks fourth wall. She all breaks fourth wall and actually sees, you know, the man behind the mirror technically, which mm -hmm. is Kevin. In that moment, I kept seeing it, and I was like, "Yo, there's no us in this MCU. Like, there's mm -hmm. no, and I don't want to label us as shit talkers, but there's no, there's no part, there's a part, there's no character." that in that particular moment that would you would have that would make you crack up seeing mm -hmm. this. Like, like even I'll just paint the picture now. This is CT show. CT, mm -hmm. and so, you know, not calling it She-Hulk, but this is your show and you break fourth wall. Like, the conversation you would have with Kevin mm -hmm. would be gold. All the fourth mm -hmm. wall stuff you'd break, all the stuff you'd ask, it would be gold. And I'm like, I noticed that. I was like, we don't have that mm -hmm. just yet. We don't have nobody that's that that's that kind of relatable. Not, and then you know, like we don't have Deadpool yet, so we don't even have him to do that. And he's still right. a very like, you know, uh, big character like that. Like it's very off the wall. There's no person that's just like a regular, just like yo. When the X Men coming out, Kevin, don't do me like that. Kevin, <laughs> you, yeah. if you don't let me do this. I swear, I'll start naming all Spider Man characters. Yeah. I swear, uh, I'll mess you and yeah. Sony stuff. But you better, you better let me. I just want to make one change. And it's just like that type of stuff. I'm like, ah, I can't wait till we get there because I feel like we're missing that. Yeah. Uh, that that Kevin aspect, for it to be a robot, I was like, ah, I damn near would have rather she talked to Kevin Feige because okay. it's like. Yeah. Well, you agree with that? Yeah. You would agree that yeah. it was Kevin. I agree that it should have been Kevin too. Yeah. Me it's too. like, why give me the robot and name him K-E-V-I-N? Yeah. And, and I don't, and the thing is, I feel like Kevin Feige, and this is just me, y'all can, uh, you know, this is y'all opinion, my opinion, but I feel like it is that time for Feige to start allowing himself to be mentioned within these movies. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, you are, you're the Stan Lee of the MCU. It's okay mm -hmm. for you to be in this. It's okay for you to have your small cameos if you choose to. It ain't got to be a lot. It ain't got to be all the time. But this particular mm -hmm. one would have been great if she hope got to walk in your office and sit down with you and talk. Because to hear you say, can can you change back into Jen real quick? Because <laughs> you know what would happen. I, 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 I thought, <laughs> yeah. You saw the last trailer. That would have been like, better. Yeah. That would have been great. Yeah. And oh, I, th boy. I think the, the only reason why he did it that way probably is because that ending, you pro he probably still couldn't explain it. So it was like, oh, no, it wasn't me. It was the algorithm. Like, you know, it was his buffer for people to not associate it with the person, but say, oh, yeah, it's a, it's a robot algorithm. But we all know that it's really him. But it's just like, I wonder what if I, that's the reason, the thought behind it. What I, what I wanted from the end of She-Hulk is something bigger to 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 scare her like maybe um uh, i don't know i, I know it's not going to happen like you know silver server silver surfer coming down like you know hawk she hawk we have a problem no, something like that, that. that so could've something been done, something but, yeah that so, something that big that happened and and so it was like oh what's about to happen next versus a closure i didn't like the closure of the episode like they were like fast yeah. and furious at the picnic you, could, you know what i'm saying yeah, you could have shown that behind the screen. Like you could have showed yeah. like space and then this small blip. Right. Doing something like this coming. Yeah. yeah it's like, something. yo, what is that in the background? That well, definitely go ahead. No, go, no, no, go CT. That definitely looking at the show it was like I definitely saw the the picnic and was like, because I knew they were gonna sprinkle some things. For me, the villain of the season was not big enough. You showed me Titania way too many times. She has a more mm -hmm. she has a more extensive rogues gallery, I'm sure. I love seeing my guy from the Wrecking Crew. First of all, Nick Gomez. I worked with him some years ago in Louisiana, and I'm so glad to see him get a shine, as well as uh one of the comedians who played Man Bull. And I, I mean, I was like, yeah, Nathan Hurd. 
he's a I love seeing the familiar faces, but she didn't have a true villain that she could go all out with. The problem that I had with the series, as much as I loved it, is every superhero needs to have that person that they go toe to toe with. I mean, you can see um uh the show that I just mentioned, Moon Knight. Moon Knight even had it where he went toe to toe with the guy, right? When you look at uh Hawkeye, he had his, you know, the villains that he was dealing with. Intelligentsia for them just to be a bunch of nerds and not like I preferred, even though they didn't like the trope of him taking the serum of <laughs> I preferred her being able to fight somebody because every superhero story has you having that one face off with a villain where they go all out and they come back bloody. And it took all of they had all that they had to beat this villain. So for her to have not ever had that fight, we never got to see what she was truly made of to see her get exhausted and breathing Mm -hmm. hard and beat up. And then have to truly fight. So that's the one thing that was missing from the show, even though it was well, a comedy, they, uh, legal comedy. Where they shot themselves in the foot at is that one, Titania in the comics is one of her biggest, if not her biggest foe, right? So they make, they, like I said, they, they shot that load off too early. But in the courtroom, oh. Mallory is also one of her biggest foes, right? So it's like the two people that she usually have to deal with in her, in her superhero form and in her attorney life. You made you change those characters too, or, or re, like change them too early. Mallory's kind of like a friend, and uh, no, 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 not Mallory. What's the um the black lady name? Oh, I'm is it was it? I thought it was Mallory. What was her name? Never gonna know this. Wait, no. <laughs> hey, so, now I'm trying to remember. Can, is Mallory the the, the best let's, friend, or let's the, just call her? Let's just call her Pat. Because no one's <laughs> well. Either this. way it goes, the one that ends up representing Nick, her and helping her. Nikki. Nikki. Okay, so it is Mallory. Oh, yeah. So yeah. So so Titania should have been the big villain, but like like I said, they showed her too much. They kind of they didn't utilize her as big enough, and they then they her made Mallory. Sure. Yeah. So like that's kind of where they shot. So now they they would essentially have to pull somebody from her role gallery that's not as big in the comics and now make them larger than life. Well, but so, still, so, still, yeah. Go ahead. Ian. So mutants just exist now. They're not even going to announce where they came from. So, so here's my thing with that. Uh, so, in going into the episode where Dale Dermal is first featured, that was something very interesting because when they were in court, he mentioned that the Soviet Accords don't exist anymore. And so, with that, I was just like, oh, okay, because I always put that as, okay, this is y'all version of the Mutant Registration Act. But uh... since that's on, it's like, okay, that was the first rendition mm-hmm. of this which now opens up the Mutant Registration Act to come back and for those inhibitors to also make a comeback because of the fact that all three people, basically hulks, are wearing this. uh, Abomination had to wear one, She-Hulk had to wear one, and Hulk was wearing one. So that's going to definitely come back into play, and I think they're going to tie that in with the Mutant Registration Act when they start bringing in mutants. So the question I have for that to make sense is did... Did uh, Bruce invent that, or had they been acting like those existed before he was wearing his? I, I think didn't he say he created it? He worked on it. Okay, then if that's the case, then that trumps my theory of having every mutant having to have worn one for the past twenty years, and that be a way <laughs> they can explain why they haven't been here. Oh, I got you. I got you. Yeah. I mean, that technology could still be because remember, Bruce still basically works with the government. So right. Technically, he could be working with Sword right now. I love Sword. that Scar would like Sakar, his son. No, Scar is his son. Mm-hmm. I yeah. love that they introduced that, but now it's like, yo, you told me you couldn't give Hulk his own movie. So how are we doing this? Two the, I, two things. Two, yeah, go, go ahead, Dion, because I know two. Yeah, hold on, hold on, Will. Hold on, Will. No, 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 Dion. This was not going to happen, man. This nigga Will was on a rhythm. And this nigga Dion hit you with this twice. So he's not even looking up to see what you're about to talk. So go ahead, Will. You say your shit and then let Dion go. This nigga's out of control. 
You see it. Everybody see it. This nigga did. Look at him doing it right now. Like, he gonna pop up with three and interrupt like, somebody. I be, I be knowing y'all busy, so I chalk it up to them. Like, yo, these are three of the hardest working men I be knowing. So I try to just not take it personal. I'm just glad y'all here. We can talk about this shit. But I, but I, but I, I appreciate CT being the sheriff for this. Like, oh, man, hold on, no. You go, you go sit there and get the porn catalog ready for next week. <laughs> uh, but it was two things. One, it feels like if a movie is going to happen, you're going to combine World War Hulk and Planet Hulk together. Oh. Because for uh, Scar to, I guess, supposedly what I guess have been on Sakaar this whole time, mm-hmm. I guess he was born there. I guess that's the thing that they're going to push, that he was born on Sakaar. But it's just like, okay, but Planet Hulk was a dead planet that he went to. And because of his blood, all of that stuff started growing. And so, oh, that's where, that. yeah. So, and that's where he met another Hulk uh, type person, had a baby. And that's where Scar come from. And so, eventually, okay. all of them ascend to Earth. And that's how World War Hulk happens. So, they all come mm. to Earth. Yeah, World War Hulk is where they come invade Earth. Like, him, all the Hulk. Oh. And because remember, in Civil War, uh, the Illuminati didn't want Hulk to be on, not be on their side, so they put him in a spacecraft and shot yeah, him in the space, mm-hmm. and oh. then they shot him to a planet, which is what he turned into Planet Hulk. Yeah. But see, they, to, they changed to, that to where he just left. Yeah, and to confirm, uh, Bruce did invent the inhibitor, um, yeah. so it was it was made by Bruce. He created it after all the events and everything. Oh. So it, it, this is just a recent, this is recent technology, but then uh, Damage Control made like an alternate version of it to utilize for them when they, you know, capture superpower being. So, mm. yeah. And so we now know that that technology is being built too on mm-hmm. how to stop uh, superheroes. And so, but uh, other thing I didn't like about Scar was I don't, I don't, <clears throat> I don't like that these hulks ain't hulking. Yeah. Like, you remember when you used to see Hulk, you'd be like, damn. Um, it used to be like a cool. wild pit bull. It's like, oh shit, yeah. who, who's Hulk I, is that? I, like, I was like, I feel like I'm going like, to Hulk at Whole Foods. And you'd be like, hey, man. <laughs> hey what's yeah. up, Hulk? I like you, man. Yeah. Hey, I drink that too. Oh shit. I need a raging alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what I do then? You made a good point when you said he was so much shorter than Abomination because it's like, I don't remember them not being the same height. So the fact that you made Abomination that big and made Hulk that small, and then when he introduced his son, his son is like two inches shorter than him, which the way that they made Hulk seem in the show was like he's damn near like 6'5". So if he's 6'5", and his son is now 6'2", it's like now you're showing me that this is not even a big guy. I'm just like, so yeah. why is the why is the rock and Roman Reigns the designs for these damn hoax? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, y'all supposed to be big. Yeah, like, they're supposed to be huge. And, and then I'm just like, okay, so who you because here, here's my thing, and I know they don't bring this up. Who you let fade your hair like that? Because this <laughs> one let me know Star got friends and yeah. they didn't tell him nothing. They didn't tell him nothing. Whoever, 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 whoever gave Sam Wilson that motherfucking chin strap is who cut that because that chin strap I hated. So whoever gave him that chin strap was the per- same person who cut up Hulk son and the same person that had made Robert Downey Jr.'s beard lower and lower and lower every movie. When he did Iron Man one, it was perfect. Iron Man two was a little thin. You're like, all right, okay. Iron Man three, Avengers is like every single one was thinner and thinner and barely existed. And it's like, what are we doing? You you wasn't for his beard character development? No, because it got worse every movie. I'm an Iron Man guy. I'm like, bro, you was looking at that. I'm looking at that hair up there thin, and be like, I see that spike. Like when I watched it game, I was like, whoa, hey, bro, you might, you might yeah. hit that comb over. Hit that comb over. <laughs> that mohawk. You ain't even got the Hawkeye right here. Oh. Like, this Hawkeye is made a comeback with that hair, boy. He looks so badass. I was like, that's dope, Hawkeye. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the like, thing oh, about yeah. some of these actors that they got because Don Cheeto, he cannot hide his grays. And so when you be seeing his his like his stubble, it's like, bro, you be you look you be looking old, bro. Like if for he's you, fifty-six. <laughs> I, I know, know that's what I'm saying. You know, Damn, I don't mind that. I don't mind that though, because it's like he out of everybody probably got it the worst and got the most stressful job because you basically the bridge. Like you got to work with the superheroes <laughs> and you got to try to listen to what the military talking about yeah, too. So right. it's like 
yo, man, this yeah. shit is And my legs don't work? I and here's the thing. I don't know, because when we saw the trailer for Armor Wars, I mean, not Armor Wars, uh, Secret Wars, he was walking normally. I, well, at he the time... apparatus. We, yeah, and at the time we saw it, they hadn't used that nanotechnology either. And so that was the thing, thing I think so, too, is that I don't think that they never introduced... Because I always saw it, too, and then when I saw Endgame, is sometimes he had them braces on and sometimes he didn't. So I think like how you talking about, we may get to see some of that nanotechnology from the armor suit to mm. explain why he can just walk regular now. Because mm. okay. he was in a suit walking like Don Gito be walking. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And uh, shout out to Wong, of course. Wong oh. out here. Uh, we, we know Wong ain't a virgin. Wong out here. Tapping that, what's her name? Miss, they're tapping that Missy Madison. Madison watching Madison. Madison with a Y, but it's not what you think. Yeah, hello, how are you think? <laughs> hey, Yo, this, Wong this show up. Go ahead. Hey, I was gonna say, this let me know that if they gave Wong a show, I definitely would watch it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's but the thing Wong, you can't give him a show because yeah. as much as we love Wong, it's gonna take away from Doctor Strange. Like Doctor Strange, remember, they said they're building their entire MCU around him. So if you give Wong a show and you can't lower your movie stars to then be on TV. So the thing that I loved about the Marvel Universe, uh, Disney Plus Universe, is that they gave everybody who hadn't had a film their own show. So that way you could start to love these characters. But they never brought their movie stars to television what i mean is the only person of the avengers that you could say has been in the television form i okay. think y'all said the quick thing was okay i think y'all said the quick thing was uh captain marvel made an appearance in miss marvel into the episode i mean into the season and the hulk is big character enough that's made mm -hmm. an appearance but none yeah. of their stars and i'm even going to defend the hulk thing the hulk the Mark Ruffalo version has never had his own film. So he goes into oh, the list of people that didn't have their own film. Now, when you say Hawkeye, oh. he's also a guy that didn't have his own movie. You so never you saw Thor in none of these TV shows. You never even saw uh would you would you count Nick Fury too? Widow. Uh no, because Nick Fury uh Nick Fury has always been acclimated into the television projects. Okay, he was yeah, even in say, Agents of Shield. Yeah, he yeah, but they, yeah. But so they asking, was he him. in that Avengers category or the Hawkeye category? Like no movie. That's that's more what I was Yeah, he's asking. no yeah, he's no movie. So none okay. of the characters who've had their own films, i.e. a Chris Rogers, uh Chris Rogers, i.e. a Chris Evans, i.e. a Tony Stark, um mm -hmm. Scarlet, I mean Scarlet, Black Widow, like none of the people had who had their own films were in any of the Disney Plus series. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. right. Yeah. So it, it but, but if I'm being honest though, don't nobody want to fuck with Doctor Strange like that. What? <laughs> he ain't he ain't an anchor, bro. And then I, and I I tell you just like how how Ali Sadiq says, there's a time and a place mm -hmm. where you can see where your life went wrong. Mm. And I know where it was for Doctor Strange, and people don't want to admit it, but this is where you lost all credibility for this motherfucker. When you saw him making balloon animals on Saturday Night Live, I said, you basic bitch. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? You took. You, I was like, I don't know how to look at you right now. You over here dressed as this dude balloon animals. Showing the most of white privilege. This is why Wong surpassed your ass. This That's is hilarious. This is, these are the reasons why you number two. This is why well, you, you well, number two in everything. Well, the, I mean, the, I, the reason why most people like Wong is, I think we said this before, is because he has the most realistic reactions to everything. Like, he's like, hey, keep me out of this shit. Like, he, Wong will bounce ASAP. Like, you know what? Y'all got it. Come out of here, bro. <laughs> like, like oh, and I think that's that's so relatable, especially to people of color, because we see some shit that has nothing to do with us. Hey, just keep me out of it. Y'all do y'all. I'm gonna be over here. Like, well, they say, oh, well, well, Wong, you are an accessory of breaking someone out of the uh, prison. He said, "Good day." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, bounced. 
<laughs> he realized he's like, also, oh no, no, no. That, but, <laughs> but I also like that too, though. Like one, one, I love that one has that that feeling of so let's also make this very clear. Can't none of y'all whoop my ass. Like right. I, I was I was a librarian, now I'm so some spring. Yeah. Like, yo, because even like how he used to he was checking Doctor Strange in the movie, like, so you 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 know what's custom to bow to the source. Oh, you know. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So what so what did you fuck up now that I gotta clean up? That I gotta oh, clean that, up. Oh, that, that big thing up there. Okay. You don't <laughs> you, you wait till an hour and 48 minutes after this movie. You gonna here's the thing. Wong is amazing, but the DC Disney Plus category has always and has been built so far off of sidekicks. So everybody that's a sidekick and not the A plus player has been in a Disney Plus series. The only person to break away from that has been uh, Sam Wilson's Falcon, now being the Captain America in the film. After that, uh, and then technically, and then technically, that's a transition from an original character now to because you were originally Falcon in that, right? Now you Captain America, so this technically is a new chapter. With this is a new character. chapter, and Black, I mean Black Widow, and Scarlet Witch. I'll give her her credit for becoming the villain in Doctor Strange too. So that's also another one who came from TV show headlining back to film and now she's headlining. Like I like the way they build their characters up, especially people that they didn't have. Now it's going to be interesting to see what they do with Hawkeye because nobody popped from Hawkeye except uh Kingpin. And now we see Daredevil and Hawk, I mean uh, in a uh, She-Hulk. So it's like that. I love his theme song. I love how he showed up. I love how they showed us. Don't like the costume. I love how they showed that he well, you, is. You know which one that is. Devil. You know which one that is. That's Vacation King Perry right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he because you know because as soon as I saw the ad, I was like, oh, I know what King Perry this is. But that one was ruthless though. That's the one that like. Well, because because they, they, they made him more powerful. They, they yeah. Like, they gave but that's him, the yeah. that's the underground one too though. Like the one that wear yeah. that shirt. That's the one that's really like heavy within the underground outside of his empire. Like that's well, no, not like, Kingpin, Daredevil. Like oh, Kingpin killed it from Hawkeye. I'm saying he popped. I'm saying Daredevil. I didn't like his uh costume in She Hulk. Ah, yeah, the mustard I, and ketchup. Let, let, let's get let's get into the into Daredevil. I heard so, that was the original outfit. It is. It's it's comic book accurate, but still, it wasn't a fan favorite of mine. Even in the comic books, you look like ketchup and mustard. Yeah, and the fact that you blind is even more just funnier. But I will say though, what I did like that I did take away from this was that there's a tone that they gave him that missed in Netflix. So it's like, and now it makes me more confident in knowing. I'm gonna still get that grittiness of him, but now I've seen him in a light where he shit talks. Like you never seen him really shit talk when he fought. Like when yeah. she was like, "Yo, I'm gonna kick your ass." Consider my ass unkicked. I was like, <laughs> "I've yeah. never seen. I've never. Yeah, I've like never really heard you talk shit when you fight." And I'm like, "Okay." So seeing well, you know, that, MCU then, love their quips. MCU yeah. loves their quips. But then seeing him for the first time, and that shit amazed me. I was like, "Yo." This is the first time I've seen him dressed as Daredevil in day. Yeah. In broad daylight, walking the walk of shame mm-hmm. in his suit. I was like, <laughs> it's but, you, you it. <laughs> yeah, but what I did love is seeing um seeing the fact that this is one small thing. When he w- did the walk of shame, he was walking in the grass with no socks on because he's still blind, so he didn't have his stick. <laughs> two, <laughs> two, they called him Daredevil, <laughs> not the Devil of Hell's Kitchen. I'm so sorry, CT. Yeah, sir, just. <laughs> yeah. I never thought of that till now. Like, yeah, that was brilliant. I picked it up right when he did. I was like, oh, that's dope. Yeah, that's why she was off. He didn't have his stick, and. Yeah. Uh, the fact that Daredevil was one of the Netflix shows that was done so beautifully that, that Kevin Feige was like, we got to bring him back as Daredevil. Yeah. yeah. Because he his show was so dope. You also notice when they tried to recreate that famous hallway scene from the Netflix Daredevil in the She-Hulk when uh, they were going through the hallway. And it was cool. But it wasn't the one on Netflix. Oh no, yeah. they they can't they couldn't get that savage. <laughs> no. Yeah, and you gotta remember too, like hers isn't PG thirteen. So that's uh, the reason why too. Hers isn't a PG thirteen show. You know what I also love about what they did with Daredevil? If you pay attention to the things that he said, 
it didn't contradict anything that happened in the Netflix series. Like right. even when his even with Luke Jacobson, he said, oh, yeah, he's working on my new suit. When he talked about his law firm, he said, we recently changed. And he says, we, you know, and then we think about the end of Daredevil in the Netflix series where, you know, for, um, where they all create their new law firm. So it's like everything that he said, it can still coexist with what happened in the Netflix series. He didn't say anything that contradicts anything that happened. I thought that you got to really remember, you got to remember, though they said uh, Daredevil born again. He said it's the new show, but it's not a new show because yeah. Disney owns the rights to all the Netflix shows and they acquired them and put them on Disney yeah. Plus. So they can't go against what they've told. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with Iron Fist, though, because I haven't heard anything <laughs> positive <laughs> about that brother show. And all, it's like, all, all you, heard was trash. you just heard a dude go, I mean, I, I, I'd like to come back. I'm and I'm sure you would. But here's the I, thing. I, I play it again. Luke That's Cage. all you heard. That was it. I... Luke Cage is Luke Cage, no matter what. I would love to see. I would love to see how they revisit or try to redo the Defenders, but eh, that wasn't it. The way they did it on Netflix. Nah, 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 nah here's nah, the nah. thing too. That's that's gonna take a while because um, I don't know how Disney's gonna get around people saying nigga in that show. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, no. I don't know how this is gonna be. <laughs> Yo, I will feel uncomfortable. Like, no, we got all black writers, though. We got all black writers. We got oh, a black like director. Oh, we like Disney. Oh, not, not on Disney. Not, not on my Disney. Wait, not on my if, you, if, if you've been black in the MCU for this long, and they let somebody else be the first person to drop, nigga, do you feel away? <laughs> Like, do you feel a way if you don't get to be able? Like, I've been in the MCU since the day one, and y'all ain't let me drop, nigga. And now y'all bringing somebody else in. Why, why, why they get to do it? Why can't I? Why can't I do it? Yo, like, that's like hilarious, doing. though. Who would you, who would you want to be the first person to say it? Samuel Jackson, man. Who do you think? You got to be Samuel Jackson. You got to go, go Samuel. Jackson. There's no other person that deserves. Hold on, have they have they dropped the person. MF? Have they dropped the MF yet? They they hinted at it at the end when yeah. at the end uh, when he blipped and then he said he was right before he hit it he said mother and then he blipped and then he blipped away. Yeah. I think shit is like the only like foul foul thing. No f bombs in. No f bombs in. No f bomb shit. I don't. No no. I mm. think in the MCU right. I think someone has said f. I think Star Lord may have said it in Guardians of the Galaxy. Hmm. But it'd be very light because there's only a certain amount mm -hmm. of them you could say before the uh rating change from like PG right. or something else. It's only I just wonder what the next step is, bro. Like, what is the next step for She Hulk? Because you show us this thing with Hulk, you show us um now we know that she's gonna be starting her own law firm, which is great. Mm -hmm. But it's like, what is the step? I would have loved to have seen her get her own law firm sooner. Yeah. Like when they yeah. hired her to be uh to be a part of the conglomerate in the law division i would have rather saw her start her own firm then and start encountering superheroes or heroes and then have to defend them at that point which yeah. also too would have worked very well if they would have utilized titania better because in the episode where she sues her for a trademark mm -hmm. that's when you could have saw her kind of have her hulk out yeah and and yeah. you know and that's when they get scared of her too and it's just like yo this is what Bruce was trying to tell you about. Like, yo, you got a villain, you got power, and this is what she did, and look how she got you out here now. Because the intelligence way they ended it, it. yeah, nah. it and the way and the way that they ended it, they didn't leave any lingering thing that lets you say, oh, "Okay, I can't wait for next season or the next appearance of her." Like right now, it seems like everything worked out in her favor. She got the guy. She got and now people accept her for being She Hulk and and Jen and. Like, there's really nothing left for her at the moment. What we should have saw, too, was her action, the, the ramifications of her suing them. Like she said, I'll see you in court. We should have saw something of that. And then that could have yeah. also been one of the end clips of uh, Todd in jail. And then someone approaches him and they tell him, like, yo, we see what you were doing. Let me show you the real intelligentsia. And then it goes off. Oh, yeah, something like that probably would have. That yeah, would've, that so would've, it's like that would have been enough. That so, would have been yeah, enough. Yeah, so it's still there. That's still established. We know. Okay, so there's something bigger to this. 
but it right. wouldn't have just been like no like it was too it was too campy it was like even right. like the flash on cw would have been like that's how you ended it we don't even know. We, we at least defeat somebody first i think something that would have been dope on brand is if she went to like the indian ocean and she seen the hand and she's like what the hell is that <laughs> like, like just kind of this like yes thank you you are acknowledging this we see yeah. it again if, if her boss would have sent her out there, be like, yo, I know we fired you, but look, we'll bring you back uh, as, you know, like contract, and this your first yeah. one. And then she just yeah. out there, she's like, what the hell? And it just yeah. zooms out, and it's that. It's like, <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, well her, her and Bruce just like leaping over the ocean. He, she's like, what was that? It's like the, doing a <laughs> big ass like, jump. Whoa, whoa, you gotta be careful jumping on this. This is an ancient, <laughs> it's an ancient artifact. Wait, where are we? And it just zoom out. And Bro. it's him sitting there, it's just like... You can understand, as somebody who has a fear of large bodies of water, when I saw... <laughs> <laughs> when I, I didn't saw, know about you. <laughs> when I saw Eternals, and I saw that hand come up from the water, it truly scared the shit out of me. Because picture... <laughs> Picture you're in the ocean, bro, and a large <laughs> hand comes from the water like that. That's gonna fucking give you a heart attack, bro. I'm not even picturing I know you being I... there while it happened. I'm still tripping from seeing it out there. Wait, like, wait, right? Because CT, I know you saw that clip of that of that uh, that couple that was kayaking in that big ass blue Of whale. course. So like, it's, like that. That was scary. So it's terrifying, bro. <laughs> so, because Eternals had the CGI effect too. So it's like even yeah. at the end when the hand grabbed them and brought them into space, and it's like oh, they're boy. so minute compared to this yeah. large human yeah. being. Yeah. yeah, it yeah. it's it's scary, bro. Like that it should have been really the scary. Earth should have shaped because there's no way it, it should have been like a a, a a tsunami of water well, just well, coming. Well. Because, well, here's what they did. So, you know, just to let y'all know, they just proved that, you know, Earth flat. So that was that was them letting y'all know. Because how you just said, if this was circular, that would have happened. Tidal waves would ensue, <laughs> breaking the atmosphere. Like you to your your hand coming down, even stopping right here is a comet. Like you're all this on yeah, your fingertips yeah. on fire. So by the yeah. time you stop and the, the force from you stopping still hits Earth. And something should happen, but like how you said, the fact he just everybody can see this dude in space and just did this and was like, "Come in, <laughs> free, free sample." Like, yeah, free sample. Sample. no, no, uh, that is scary. That, and that's scary. what they need. They need to. They need to do like web series short of just people reacting to that because somebody had to see it. Marvel somebody one. Had it. Somebody yeah. had to see in Moon in Moon Night when old boy was was changing the, the, the sky. <laughs> Like what? Yes. Who's the person yes. who's like, yo? Now, that that would have been the perfect, <laughs> and that would have been the perfect time to introduce cannabis into the MCU. They'd have been like, <laughs> cannabis. Right, oh I'm my just, god! I, that, I need to that should have been. <laughs> Am I the only one saying this? Is it <laughs> right? Is that gonna kind of fuck you up, bro? Like, you can't <laughs> fuck with the stars and moon like that. We should have had all types of tornadoes. It's like tsunamis, hurricanes. You can't fuck and with the moon like and that. That's, and that's why I hate missing the black effect too, because somebody have been on there and be like, all right, technically I've been at work for 12 weeks. Um I'd be like, I'd be like for all of that. I, I, like I've been here. I've been here, baby. Like I, I did been my here. work. <gasps> yeah, I don't that's yeah, fun, I would I would love to see some of these, some of these things explained. That's why I like them though doing the Marvel presentation stuff. So it's like mm -hmm. I like them like doing werewolf by night and everything because as y'all said, it gives them a chance to take people who we won't really get to see do a lot and that really may not need a series. You get to see those type of yeah. things. Werewolf and by night, yes. But the only complaint that I have about that is werewolf. They did the thing that we loved growing up, which is hand make the costumes and you didn't need the computer graphics. Mm -hmm. But werewolf should be half Hulk's size. He shouldn't be this little wolf type dude. Like, if you're going to do it, make him brolic and huge. Don't just add five pounds of mass to his chest and hair. Well, I think I think they went by the, the old school logic and stuff. And I don't like that either. Like, I like um, when Hugh Jackman played Van Helsing. Mm -hmm. I like those werewolves. I'm like, I need you to be like eight feet tall. I yeah. even like how they transform. Like, make the skin fall off. 
and stuff like that. Yo, like, I love like I love like yeah, if y'all yeah. I love Van Helsing. It gotta be, with, it, uh, it gotta look painful fire. when you transform. Yeah, like, like when they did it and was yeah. shredding their skin and coming out, I was yeah. like, yo, that's how you become a werewolf. Not yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah, not <laughs> this. I'm not on the hunchback <laughs> like this, and I got a whole bunch right. of hair, and I'm just yeah. <laughs> Why is it so painful? Why is it like <laughs> Oh, oh, like, yo, you be breaking. This Have be, you seen they, Hemlock Grove on Netflix? Yeah, Hemlock Grove. I remember Hemlock that. Hemlock Grove probably has the most accurate of watching someone metamorph into an animal. That's probably like mm-hmm. the most painful looking one because him turning into like a wolf dog, whatever he was turning into, and watching like this bone break ah, yeah. and, his hind leg, and him yeah. jump down like, oh. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I see why you be mad all the time. I would want you. <laughs> <laughs> but when you think about a transformation, it gotta be that. It's like yeah, you change your bones are shifting. Makeup. So why your don't the Hulk shifting. do that? Exactly. He Ooh. just be growing. Why she Hulk can't go through that? Right. Yeah. But when you look at even True Blood, their werewolves were terrible because them motherfuckers it would was. just turn into dogs. Person. It's like, yeah. come on, man. I, I would like to thank yeah. you, CT, for acknowledging True Blood. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a lot of groups that be, you know, they don't be on that oh. like me. Oh, man, I, I used to love True Blood. Love True Blood. Love, man. Yeah. Speaking of old school, though, I did like how they did that so, that, um, that intro to the final episode. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Shout out to Bill Bixby's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. That, was re- that was really dope. Like, you and know little no- lesser known fact. The body double for She Hulk that was really just, the true body uh double because it's a man, mm-hmm. yeah. I just, wow. I just saw yeah. that article. It's a man that does the uh the CGI body work for mm-hmm. She Hulk, yeah. For the original, hold on, for oh. the She Hulk that we watched for 10 CG. episodes, yeah. The CGI is based off of this man, so he does the motion capture because he's tall. With- and he's got the uh the size. It's a man. It's a man which, walking, that's not baby. Great. That's yeah. not great. Which is I, I, would think, I would think they would got like a volleyball player or a basketball player. Well, they, they would have, but she's in jail in Russia right now. Okay, <laughs> so that's why she couldn't do it. This I knew it. So I knew it, man. Uh, you know, uh, this episode uh, is off the uh, rails. Uh, <laughs> Woo, boy, we are wild. Quick, quick draw, boy. Woo. <laughs> boy, I tell you what. But yeah, it's a man that does the body doublet, and so when they did the flashback, shout out to Bill Bixby, '80s Hulk. Yeah. They showed him in full on uh Hulk, She Hulk yeah. uh, gear, which was dope. But yeah, that intro was incredible, man. Yeah, yeah, I, lo- I love the nodes back to the old school. Even like the fourth wall breaking, like uh how you said though. Um, I'm hoping season two we see them more confident in this show. Like oh. I, I like that y'all, I like that y'all gave us She-Hulk. I do believe She-Hulk is a great character. I would love to see her interact into the MCU um with whatever they do have planned, but I would like to see like how you said CT. I want to see a basis for her now. Like, yeah. give me a real villain mm-hmm. for her to fight. Yeah. Let me see mm-hmm. how she's rebuilding herself. Now, give us a re- give us a show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Give yeah. us a real attorney show. Like we've seen the comical side. Now let us also see like some of that drama thrown in there too. I having to deal with stuff. Like I would love an ongoing case yeah. that she has to work on. A huge ongoing case she got to take on that has something to do with what holds next for the MCU. I wouldn't be mad at that. Hey, yo, the you U.S. Sue Wong. Uh, because he definitely broke out abomination again. Uh, yeah, what? They, like, they, what they, got got they, they got a warrant for his arrest, and they want to turn right. themselves in. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us uh, with two episodes. I'm just keeping honest. You're gonna see this ending twice. So the previous episode. <laughs> Talking about She Hulk and this episode with us just talking about Marvel, DC, and catching up with so many things and stuff like that. So, as always, I like to uh, thank Dion, CT, and of course, Young Deuces for joining on these episodes for us. We hope that y'all enjoyed them. Let us know on She Hulk, you know, what was your favorite episode and your greatest takeaway with She Hulk? What did you like about the season? What didn't you like about the season? And the same thing for our uh, other show. 
that we just did. How do you feel about DC being able to cater villains to form the heroes mm -hmm. as their new formula for their movies and live action stuff? But before we get out of here, I always like people to let them know where they can be mm -hmm. following and supported. So Young Deuces, mm -hmm. it ain't nothing new, you up. Right. All right. Well, y'all can follow me at young underscore deuces. And again, make sure y'all go to watch Mojo, man. Go to watch Mojo's page. Check out some of the top 10 lists that I am now voicing. Uh, it's been a blast doing that. So I would definitely like to see some of y'all in that in that in those comments, you know, just, you know, repping and supporting, you know, what I'm saying put out put put the hashtag straight out of comic book S-O-A-C-B. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. S-O-C-B now. Yeah, S-O-C-B. Oh, S-O-C-B now? Okay, yeah, so yeah. Put, yeah. Put the hashtag SOCV. Let them know where you uh, that we repping in there. So yeah. Yes, indeed, man. Yes, indeed. And as y'all know, always make sure you support this. Support my YouTube channels. Back on the Twitch. Going hey, back on Twitch, man. I'm live. Back, man. Yes, man. Come that. check me out on Twitch Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays, and then as well as Saturdays and Sundays. You can check out my cs network that's the can't sleep network go to my twitch and you mm -hmm. can watch some of all of my favorite content i've been in it's over 300 episodes which means it's over hours Ooh. of content that you can just go watch on saturdays and sundays on my twitch channel going all the way from sunday starting at 6 a.m from i mean saturday 6 a.m all the way till sunday midnight three all the 20, 48 hours of me go Yes, indeed. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for checking out another episode of Straight Out of Comic Books. And I have been your host, Will Farrow. This has been Young Deuce, and we will catch you next time. Hey.